Um, but uh, there were so many different um, layers and different uh, kind of stories that all came together and it, it so many different emotions that it it brought up that I, I really just, I fell in love with it. And I called my agent, I said, let's do this. I'm game, I'm very excited. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass. And today I'm joined by Kristen Renton, the star of The Cricket Stance, which is coming to digital on October 26, 2021. We're going to talk to her in just a second, but first, let's check out the trailer. And while you're watching, if you can like and subscribe to this channel, that would be fantastic. It helps me out a lot. Thank you. Look what we found behind a brick wall in the attic. My sweet angel, it is late, and I'm writing this with the lamp very dim. But in order for you to know exactly where you came from, I need to tell you about my mother, Emmeline. You need to read this, but I warn you, some of it may be difficult to read. How I started reading, and I didn't stop until I finished it. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, how are you? I'm hanging in there. You know, awesome. it's Wednesday. So. That, is, that is all we can hope for these <laughs> days, am I right? Totally. All right. Uh, are, you, are you good to go? Let's do it. All right. Perfect. So thanks so much for joining me. This is Kristen Renton, the star of The Cricket Stance, who's releasing digitally on October 26, 2021. It's a, a romantic drama, but it has a little more sinister aspects than I kind of expected going in. I, I told my wife, hey, let's watch a romantic movie. And she's like, oh, this is, it has romance, <laughs> but it also has a little more drama and a little more, uh, you know, under it than I think I expected going in. So. Yeah. Yeah, it does. It kind of comes out of nowhere, but um, I think that's what makes it so unique and so beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Um, so I guess the first question is, you know, you're the star of this. How, how did you find this story? Is this something you that was on your radar to just kind of come across your desk? How did you get involved in this film? You know what? My agent reached out to me and said, hey, we we've been approached for uh, about this project. We'd love for you to read it. Let us know your thoughts. And, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. And I read it and I absolutely fell in love with it. Um, and I went out and I got the book because it's based on a on a novel. Um, and uh, I went out and I read the book and, you know, the book just really, really sucked me in. And it was such a beautiful story. I mean, and there were we have construction going on outside, so I apologize if there's random noise. Um, but uh, there were so many different um, layers and different uh, kind of stories that all came together and it, it, so many different emotions that it, it brought up that I, I really just, I fell in love with it and I called my agent, I said, let's do this. I'm game, I'm very excited. That's awesome that, you know, when you have something based on a book, you you get kind of a little more insight, right? Like if you've got the script, the script is some, a distilled down version, but when you read the book, then you can get some more insight in the characters and the story. So that's actually a fantastic way to get, get more background, you know, without having to bug the director or bug the writer. Absolutely. And, you know, the thing that I really loved about this project was um, the novel was was so beautiful, but the screenplay, screenplay really did... Uh, convey the essence of the novel you know a lot of times the book is always so much better than than the film something gets lost in translation and I think with this film um you know everybody that was participating and it really made sure that we we brought everything from the novel and conveyed it to the best of our ability in in the screenplay and I think I think it really did work and I think it, it turned out beautiful Definitely, definitely was beautiful. I, I definitely love, you know, I haven't been to Georgia and I assume it was actually filmed in Georgia, but, you know, it had really beautiful kind of environments. And then also the historical aspect was interesting as well because yeah. I didn't expect it to go there. And, you know, as, spoilers, there's, there's a historical element to this film as well that, that yeah. kind of is key to the, the overall story in this movie. Yeah, it's and, and it's not it, it, it's not comfortable. <laughs> you know, it's not a topic that people are comfortable talking about. And it was really interesting. We shot this film in 2019 and a lot of the racial tension started boiling up again right around the time when we were filming it. So it it really mm. coincided with a lot of what our country was dealing with and still continues to deal with. And I and I'm both happy and sad that it's a conversation that we still need to have mm -hmm. um, because I think we really do need to learn from a lot of what this country's already been through and, and progress in a more positive um, in a more positive way. And, and hopefully this this movie will help start that conversation for people that maybe haven't had it yet. 
Yeah, def- it definitely kind of takes it in a different angle than I think a lot of the conversations have been. Now, when this, you know, that, that's a very interesting coincidence. Did that change? You, you said you, it kind of maybe affected the film. You know, did that change anything about the film or was it just, did it just kind of add to the gravity of what you were making and kind of what you were trying to express in this movie? You know, it was really interesting. Um, I guess yes and no. Um, your question <laughs> is the, uh, <laughs> the, the director who actually was the one who adapted the screenplay, Veronica, um, she had initially included some language and some undertones that I think once we started filming, we reevaluated and decided to not include um, because it didn't necessarily, we, we kind of let the storyline speak for itself. We didn't think that that would really bring anything else to the table, if you will. Um, and Maurice, my co-star, who, who I don't really want to give a lot away, but he's, he's my main co-star in the film. Um, he is this wonderful, amazing man who actually grew up in, in Georgia, um, in, you know, a smaller area and dealt with a lot of racial issues while he was mm-hmm. growing up. And so this really brought it back home, being on an actual plantation, seeing actual slave quarters. It really, you know, and he comes from, he is a descendant of, of slaves. And so it really, for him, I watched him go through this very visceral, emotional journey. And, you know, he and I uh, had many asides where we would discuss kind of what he was feeling and what he was going through as a, as a black man. And it was, it was very eye-opening and it was very um, emotional for me having, you know, obviously not grown up in anything um, where I had to deal with anything like that. I mean, I come from a family where I, I didn't even know, honestly, that racism, racism was a thing until I was much older because that was not something that was ever taught in my family. We love mm-hmm. everybody. I, I never saw color. So having to, to kind of witness this journey that Maurice had to go on was, you know, quite emotional for me as well. And I, you know, I, I just wanted to be there for him and let him express his feelings about the whole journey. So it was really interesting um, watching him go through it, both through the script and the dialogue, but then also just personally. And then seeing how our director decided that, you know, especially with what was going on in the country, what was beneficial to us and what was not to, to keep in the script. And, and um, you know, that, that some things it would just behoove us to go ahead and, and not beat a dead horse, if you will. Yeah. No, definitely. And uh, that's also really fascinating you know, that, that Maurice was going through that kind of in real time while his character was as well. I think his character was a little more reserved than I would expect. I, I, I wonder if maybe, uh, I don't know, if some of, the, some of that drama, maybe if I rewatch it again, I'll, I'll see it. I, I thought his character kind of handled the whole historical aspect a lot more calmly than I think I would have expected. But I think that also kind of speaks to his character. His character is supposed to be kind of the calm yeah. head in this story. But I mean, that's amazing for you as well to kind of experience that because that speaks to your character in the film as well. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and one thing I really loved about your character as well is it's, so you're like a Southern belle, but like a more modern Southern belle. Like when, when the reveal happens about your job, I, I was not expecting that, you know, that's I, 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 don't, I think it's supposed to be kind of a surprise you know yeah. what you do uh, but I, I love this aspect of it like you're, you're kind of a homebody and, and, and you want to stay in the south but you are also like a driven person that has goals and has ideals and things like that was there any prep that you you know I guess how did you kind of prep for this character is it I feel like it probably has aspects of you as a person but then you also had to bring in the you know the, the setting as well yeah, you know, um, I spoke with um, uh, Debbie. She was the one who uh, was the author of the novel. Um, I spoke with her at length kind of about what she saw from my character and what she, you know, the backstory that she had developed herself for my character. And then, you know, I, I made it a little bit more my own. Um, I also know what it's like to, you know, be one of those people who likes to stay at home, but like you said, is driven, you know, there's, there's so many different things that she wants to do, but then also probably plays it safe a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and then also uh, just doesn't want to go get her heart broken. You know, she's had, a, she's dealt with a lot um, in, in her personal life and she doesn't necessarily want to want to go through that again. So, um, you know, I, I think being able to have um, the ability to speak with Debbie and kind of, understand where she developed my character from and and the ideas behind her uh, really helped me in my in my own character development 
Um, and she also said, she, she said, have you ever seen the movie Steel Magnolias? And I said, well, of course I've seen the movie Steel Magnolias. <laughs> Um, and she said, you know, there's not one specific person in there that I, I'm thinking of, but just the idea of that group of, of women and their strength and their, you know, southernness, if you will, she said, you know, I'd love to incorporate some of that. And so I, I kind of took a couple of pieces from there, at least I tried to, mm -hmm. um, to, to create this character. To make it your own. And I like how you said that she's uh, you know, maybe a little too cautious, but I do kind of feel like, especially so, in, a, a, in a career field that she has chosen, like it's unfair the the demands that they, that you have to kind of put up with as a woman in that field. Like it's, it, it, you kind of have to commit yourself to the job because mm -hmm. other aspects of your life might uh, interfere with, with your career aspirations. And that's just, I thought that that was interesting as well to see, you know, kind of yeah. knowing uh, people that, that work in that field. Yeah. I thought it was a really unique situation, a really unique character and, and background and story life. So yeah, I loved her. I loved Angie. <laughs> uh, and I also loved uh, Sandra Ellis Lafferty's character as well. I mean, she's, she's only briefly in it, but uh, what was it like working with her? You had such great chemistry in, in the scenes that you had with her. I, I imagine she just kind of came in for a little bit and then had to leave. But what was it like working with her? How did you kind of establish that chemistry? Because it was really, that was a really lovely way to start the film. I, I adore her. I think, I mean, she's, she's amazing. She's um, so talented and, you know, being able to have, even though it was just a couple of scenes with her, I mean, it, it's so important to the story, our relationship and um, to, to be able to tell the entire story, having that, those moments and having that little snippet of time, you know, is, is really important. And she, she was just so gracious and lovely and wonderful. And, and I mean, everybody on set was just kind of like, can I get you anything? How are you? <laughs> you know, like we wanted to just make sure that she was as comfortable as possible exactly. because, it, you know, we, we shot in October, so it was hot and it was muggy and there were a lot of bugs because we were in Savannah and, you know, um, so yeah, we, we all just kind of wanted to make sure that she was okay, <laughs> uh, but, we, but she, I mean, she was lovely and being able to work with her, uh, was just fantastic. And, and we already touched a little bit about uh, your and Maurice's kind of working relationship during the film, but I guess, did you do anything before to kind of establish your chemistry with him? Because that, that's another big aspect of this film. And it sounds like you went through an emotional journey during the filming. Was there anything you were able to do before or was it just the timing? You kind of just jumped in and, and, and found your characters throughout the film. We kind of just jumped in because my <laughs> first time meeting him was literally on set right before we shot. Uh, <laughs> But though, I mean, that really is a testament, though, to him and his ability and, you know, how we could both just show up and say, OK, let's do this, you know. And we had great chemistry, too, just on and off set. Um, just he's, he's a great guy. And, you know, I think being able to take those moments in between scenes and have those conversations definitely helps to build our our uh, working relationship and, and our characters on screen. Um, he uh, he turned out he's a huge Braves fan. And so is my boyfriend and he came to visit me on set. So they just went over and started chatting about all that. <laughs> so that was, you know, that was funny to see, but he's just, we became good friends and, and I don't have enough nice things to say about him. He's a very, very hardworking guy. He's working a lot. And, um, you know, and I just, I can't thank him enough for giving me, you know, my, an amazing uh, leading man to work opposite of. It was, it was a great experience. Definitely. And it's also kind of, perfect that you you met at the like right when you started shooting because that also lets your characters kind of exactly meet and get comfortable during the film so i guess that, that works perfectly yeah. i know that that's kind of a, a hallmark of indie film and you just don't have as much time as you as you would hope for but i guess here it, it worked out yeah. right it's like um, go 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 and you barely have time to breathe and you know you're doing you've got, you're wearing lots of different hats you know you're helping with the wardrobe and you're helping with the set deck and you're helping with all this stuff because everybody's there just for the same reason it's a passion project you know it's it's something that we all very much believed in we very much want to see it succeed so we all came with our a game and said all right we're going to get this done we have a short amount of time we have a, a very specific budget and let's do it uh and one thing i want to ask how much was maurice working out because like i didn't i didn't catch it during when he was in the suit but then there was a scene where he's at tank top. i was like dang like that, that guy is ripped <laughs> <laughs> so much crap about that he was like bending down like this like trying <laughs> I, mean, I know he wasn't trying to but it was just kind of like everybody that that is literally what everybody would joke with him about on set like i mean sorry we had to you know make you take time off from lifting in order to come <laughs> to be in this project right 
Uh, but it, he's, he's not hard to look at. You know, a lot of the women on set were like, you can keep your shirt off, it's fine. <laughs> you know, but it's, he's, it's just mean, the character. His character has to go through that, well, that uh, aspect. <laughs> he, uh, but he, you know, he's, he's obviously very dedicated and, and uh, it shows. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I was, I was very jealous because my, my COVID body does not look like that. So. Yeah, mine doesn't either. <laughs> well, I'd, I'd be a little concerned if yours did, uh, but you know. <laughs> Maybe, maybe that's your character for the next film. That would be a whole different role, right? <laughs> that would be very different. Um, and you mentioned kind of everyone wearing hats, everyone kind of coming together to make this film. You know, what was what was the film setting like? It sounds like it was a very supportive set. Uh, did, you know, was it based around that house? Because I love that house. Uh, yeah. I guess how, how did that work out? And how did kind of the overall filming go? It, it seems like maybe it was like a family type of setting as a lot of indie films tend to become. Absolutely. Um, Veronica was able to secure the, the filming location. And um, I mean, this house is an actual plantation from, I honestly don't even know what year it was built. It is absolutely gorgeous. Um, it is now a historical monument, I believe. There is a family that still lives there, but they live in, in the back of the house. Um, it's been in their family for, as far as I understand, many, many generations. Um, and now they, they will rent it out to... Um, whether it's it's filming or they'll give tours, you know, it's it's there for the history, things like that. Um, so she was able to secure this. I think um, there had been a, a movie that Amazon had just finished shooting, like two days, a day or two prior before our first day, and then oh, wow. literally, I think it was a day after another another big budget was coming in. So we got this like tiny little window that they said, yeah, if you want to come. And so we had to make sure that we got everything that we needed. Um, and we actually, uh, pretty much everybody was staying, you know, right within that little area. So everybody could just show up on set first thing in the morning and, um, you know, and make sure everything got done. But it was, I mean, the, the property itself is one of the most, I mean, it's gorgeous, but, you know, the history behind it, although fascinating and educational, it's sad, it's emotional, and you can feel, you can honestly feel the heaviness when you're there. It's just, it's really interesting. Yeah, no, definitely. And especially when you're dealing with that subject matter, like, as part of the film, it kind of or it, uh, magnifies that, yeah, uh, that heaviness. Uh, and speaking of that, you know, I was kind of curious, you, you, we've talked about how this film has some, some pretty dark places it goes to, some pretty dramatic aspects to it. Was the filming, you know, was, was the attitude on set, was it fun, dramatic? Like, serious somewhere in between where there are moments of levity because you know, there are this film kind of has that as well it has some moments of levity some you know very dramatic moments and, and so I'm kind of curious what the, the, the atmosphere on set was I think like any project um there's an ebb and a flow you have moments of just jovialness and, and everybody's happy and they're joking around and then you have moments where literally people are threatening to walk off set <laughs> Sounds like a family dinner, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really, and that's exactly what it is. So, you know, I, I, and especially when you are dealing with subject matter like this and, and people have very specific ideas and perceptions of what they think should happen. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, I think you, you're bound to kind of have those moments where you're buttons some heads, but then you, you have to come to an agreement. You have to come to a, a, a common, common ground. Um, so yeah, I mean, we definitely, there, there were moments where Maurice and I, I mean, especially when, not to, not to give anything away, but it, at the end, you know, I, I'm with child, if you will, and, and Maurice and oh, I, yes. <laughs> yeah, sorry, <laughs> um, I could not stop laughing because that, I, I'm joking with Maurice and I'm going, you know, I've, I've never wanted children. So, you know, me sitting there about six, seven months pregnant, I'm like, this is the most awkward thing I've ever had to do. <laughs> A testament to your acting. <laughs> oh, you know? So, yeah. I mean, there were definitely moments where we were joking around and, and having a good time. And then, you know, obviously there are moments where um, the subject matter is a bit more heavy and, you know, whether it be the actors or the, the crew are a bit more focused and, and you know, there's, it, there's no time for joking. So I think, like you said, it, it was perfect. It's like a, a big extended family dinner. There we go. Uh, so now I'd like to switch. I know we have limited time. I switched. I call it the lightning round. It's just lightweight questions about the film. See how okay. your experiences map to things that happen in the film. You can feel free not to answer any of them. I will not be offended, but I, I try to keep them very answerable. Okay. Uh, first question. Are you a city or a country girl? Mm. Uh, country. All right. 
Did you grow up in the South? I, I, there's some accent, but I can't, I can't picture it. And I'm really bad with accents. So. No, that's okay. Um, actually I, uh, I grew up in, I, majority of my childhood was Florida, but I lived in LA longer now than anywhere else, but I recently moved to New Orleans. So now I think I'm taking on a little bit of the Louisiana uh-huh. accent, I think just because I'm one who always tend to absorb those. So every now and then, yeah, there's some, there's some, um, New Orleans that comes out. Florida, Cali, New Orleans. That's an interesting combination. You're kind of like, you're staying South, but you're kind of crisscrossing the United States. I like that. Yeah. I lived in Louisville and I was born in Denver. So, you know, a little yeah. bit everywhere. Everywhere. Um, this might be an awkward question, so you can feel free to pass. Have you ever been proposed to? Yeah. A right. uh, couple of times. All right. Just, just like, uh, just like uh, the uh, Sanders character. So perfect. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> And I liked I liked your character's planning in the film. Do you have a tactic to like a, a safety net or a parachute for bad dates? Ooh, you know what? Uh, um, no, I don't because I didn't ever really date. Ah, there you go. No, I I think if I if I did have one, it would probably be the whole go to the bathroom, text your girlfriend, uh, call me in five minutes and save me kind of thing. But I didn't really date much, so no. There you go. Well. I don't know if you've missed out or if you haven't missed out. I'm not really sure what the correct <laughs> response is. What there. I hear, I didn't miss anything. Yeah, I, I, I don't think dating is, is a great thing, but I don't know. Um, have you ever wanted to be a lawyer? That's a really good question. Um, and please remember you're under oath. <laughs> I know, right? Uh, I have played one before and I have to say the idea of being able to, you know, get the bad guy in court and kind of... Um, make them pay, if you will, has always been appealing. And, and I am quite the little detective. Um, but I think, I think that's just something that I would, uh, it's, it's too much, um, too much pressure. No, that makes sense. Well, oh, I mean, you're, you're an your actor, head. you're an actor. I mean, so you have, you have pressure all the time. <laughs> I hold my own life in my hands, you know, and if, that's and true. if I screw up, it's on me, but like holding somebody else's life in your hands, that's a, that's a lot. And you want to make sure that you're not, you know, putting somebody innocent behind bars. Cause then that, that would just screw with me for the rest of my life. You know, if I ever found that, out. you know, so there's a lot yeah. more that goes into it. Um, I, I would love to be a PI. I'd love to do that. Oh, that'd be cool. I don't know if you could really like blend in though. I think that, that's what, like a PI is supposed to be like, you know, know. a hat, a trench coat. <laughs> I know. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Maybe, maybe in the second half of my life, I'll venture into something like that. Or, or yeah, or get a get a PI role and then see, see how it fits. There you go. Yeah. Um, have you ever been to court? Yes. Okay. We don't we don't have to go into what? Uh, just... <laughs> <laughs> no, trust me. I was I was the one that was taking somebody to court. Nobody told oh, okay. me. So we're good in okay. that department. <laughs> so yeah, again, you're, you're, you're holding your life in your hands right there. Um, have you ever used a metal detector to find something? Absolutely. It's one oh. of my most favorite things to do. I'm curious. What, what, what have you found? Anything good? Well, so uh, uh, I actually haven't found anything super cool. Um, I got one from my brother-in-law actually a few years back for his birthday. And we went and they had just, my sister and, and he had just purchased a, a large property. And so I, I took it out back of their property and ended up finding like a, an old gun. Well, oh. Whoa. Um, but I have a really good friend uh, where I grew up in Florida that he goes out and goes like along the shoreline and goes into the water and will find people's jewelry that they've lost while swimming or something like that or mm-hmm. or whatever it may be something that fell off a boat and he'll actually try to find the owner and return it oh. uh, so yeah so he and I actually he he was just out here um with his day job he he uh, is a lineman so after our hurricane out here in New Orleans he came out and, and tried to help you know he was helping restore all the power and mm-hmm. and he was showing me some of the videos he shot he huge like I think it was like a twenty thousand dollar diamond ring he ended up finding the owner I, I love that it makes wow. me wow yeah that- that's- such a, a service that is amazing yeah i think the owner would become me but you know i, 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 I glad know, that right? he's the one finding the jewelry because that is yeah. that is impressive yeah um so what is the hardest you've ever had to work to find something like you know a lost pet a, a lost item of value is there anything that you've had to work very hard to, to to locate you know i lost a ring that meant a lot to me once was it a $20,000? Uh, uh... yeah. No, it was just more of an heirloom. I mean, the ring itself probably had no value uh, that I that I know of, um, but it had been my mother's when she was a child. And I used to wear it all the time. And then uh, one day I woke up and it wasn't there. And I, and I didn't remember ever losing it. It was just kind of bizarre. It just wasn't there. And I ended up 
um, contacting a psychic to try oh. and find it. And they didn't specifically tell me, you know, where it went or anything like that, but they said, honey, you just got to let it go. Oh, I was like, wow. oh well, that's not, that's... that's not at all what I wanted you to tell me. <laughs> but that's actually surprisingly good advice from a psychic, right? Cause you would think they'd be like, oh, well, I'm, you know, I'm having trouble. I need to I know, right? have a little more time to, you know, but that, that's, that's, hmm. nope. I'm, I'm impressed with that psychic. Yeah. So that, that made me really sad, but uh, you know, it is, it's just, it's material crap. Mm-hmm. you know that's all it is it's, it's the memories as well but i, I understand yeah you know, like when you kind of yeah. boil it down it's just a, a, an item but you know it exactly. does have significance exactly. um and the last question is have you ever inherited something unexpectedly yeah Ooh. actually um i when my nana passed away my mom's mom um she actually left me an autobiography that she had written that oh, i that's did so cool existed. Um, and we were very close. I have yet to actually, I got one page in, started bawling. So I actually have not been able to read it yet. Um, I actually use it as a tool for emotional scenes. When I have to cry, it gets me right to where I need to be. Oh, that's so Um, cool. And my, my big emotional scene in this film, I I used it actually. Do you you think that she like just wanted you to have the story? Do you think she knew that maybe this would help you in your career because that, that's, that's really she interesting passed, she passed before i actually got into the business okay so she she had no idea i think um you know i think it was just she really loved me and my sister and i think that she wanted to give us you know because she was a lot older when we were born so i think she wanted to just make sure that we knew family history and and whatnot and she <laughs> She just kept adding to it every year. She was still here. She would just keep adding. <laughs> and, um, and yeah, I, I, cause I never got to meet my grandfather. He passed before I was born. So I think there was a lot of, of their love story that she wanted us to know as well. So, um, yeah, it's, I, I had no idea that was coming after she passed. My mom gave it to me and, and, um, someday I'll get through it. That is, have- that is an, that is an awesome story. That is, that is a great thing to inherit. Yeah. Thank you. So the film is out uh, now, I guess, October 26, 2021, digitally. Uh, you're promoting the film. You're kind of getting the word out. But uh, after this, what's next for you? Do you have other projects? I imagine you probably are because you have a pretty you know, long uh, career and you have, you have a long resume. So are there anything else on the horizon that people can look for for you? You know, um, right now, I'm actually getting a little bit more uh, behind the scenes. COVID kind of shut down my stuff, my move. I, I just kind of took some time off to to kind of get my head straight, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so now I'm starting to get a little bit more behind the scenes. There's some some uh, like documentary stuff I'm doing. Um, so, you know, once I get a little bit further down the road with that, I'll let you know. Perfect. Um, but right now I'm just really excited about the Crickets Dance coming out. I'm, I'm really proud of this film and I'm, I'm really excited for people to be able to see it. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for your time. And that's, that's awesome that you use COVID to kind of reevaluate. I, I, you hear so many people did that. And it's really great to hear that you yeah. were able to kind of use that to explore new areas of your career and new facets for your career. I think it really forced a lot of people to kind of step back. And- so I think Kristen's phone died, but you know what? We had a, a long conversation and we, we got a lot of great information about the Cricket Stance. So thanks so much for joining me and thanks so much for watching. Uh, that was Kristen Renton, the star of the Cricket Stance, which is coming to digital on October 26, 2021. Uh, it's coming out digitally, so you can check it out at home, rent it, by however you want to. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked this interview, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you.